Welcome to O-State Daily. Casey Porter here, joined by Scott McKinley as we talk about a big week off the bye week. Cowboys going Friday into Provo, Utah to take on the BYU Cougars. Maybe the best team in the Big 12, Scott. Yeah, they. Uh, it, that is definitely not what I think a lot of people would have had pegged um, you know, in the preseason. Yeah, BYU is going to be at the top of the standings. But, uh, you know, but at the same time, you know, we, we saw – um, a little bit of what BYU could do last year in that really tight game. I remember I was there. It was really cold. Um, you know, we ended up winning the thing in overtime. I mean, we had to have a massive comeback. But, you know, BYU is very well coached. They're disciplined. Um, they do have some talent. Um, yeah, this is this is really going to be a tough, tall task for the Cowboys on Friday night. I think the BYU team and Oklahoma State, both of these teams in this game Friday, go to show that in this day and age with where the margins are so slim, everybody has great players. It seems like there's so much parity. The difference is good quarterback play versus not good quarterback play. Jake Retzloff for BYU, second year in the system. He was not even the starter until the OSU week last year, at least the clear identified starter, versus Alan Bowman, who has struggled from time to time. Mike Gundy addressed that yesterday. I think it's a, in a lot of ways it, you could make it as simple as BYU's had good quarterback play. Oklahoma State has not. Yeah, I mean, literally, you know, and I think Gundy even alluded that uh, to that in his uh, press conference yesterday. That ultimately, it comes down that one position is absolutely crucial. If you don't get good quarterback play, it's going to be very difficult to win ball games in any league in college football these days. Um, you know, I, I, I think I'm like everybody else who keep waiting for where's the Bowman from the OU game last year? Where's the, you know, um, but that just, for whatever, it just hasn't happened. So, I mean, it's, I mean, and, and you look at Retzlaff, you know, he's not a, in, in my opinion, he's not a guy that I think we're going to see playing on Sundays. But at the same time, he doesn't make mistakes. He makes good decisions. He's got a good enough arm. He's accurate when he does make a throw. Um, I mean, which at, at the end of the day, that'll win you a lot of ball games. And he runs the ball very well, which has been yep. a problem for OSU's defense. Yes, yeah. For what? Yeah, running quarterbacks have just absolutely given us fits. You know, like we, we talked before that you know OSU is a blitzing team, um, which I like. But at the same time, that can also get you caught, particularly if that first wave misses. Um, particularly with a running quarterback, he he slips that first tackler, and man, he could have a huge hole to run through. He can get you know twenty, thirty yards down the field. So, I think we're going to have to. Um, I mean, we're going to have to find a way to contain him. I mean, mm-hmm. right. Right now, I don't have a whole, I don't have a whole lot of uh, um, optimism. Optimism. Yeah, yeah I, I think that'd be the right. I'm, I'm trying to find the right term to use there, but right now, I don't have a whole lot of optimism that we're going to be able to do it. But you know, I mean, hey, you know, if we, we got to start this thing off somewhere, again, it'd be great. That'd be a what a great win that would be if we could come pull that off on uh, on Friday night. If that if that could happen, Gundy has alluded to this. Sometimes you can get on the road in a, in a road environment. It's a long ways away from home. And it can kind of galvanize you, if you will, because you don't have any distractions of being at home. You're just together on the plane. You're together in the hotel. You're together at practice. And sometimes that can actually bring a team together. I guess I'm searching here for, for some positives, but is is that too tinfoilish? No, I mean, I, I do think there is truth to that because I think it does cause you to I, – I would say there's more focus on the task – element rather than it is you know at home there's a whole lot of emotions you know you got your your big intro when you come out you know you got 50,000 people screaming for you um you know or booing yeah yeah or booing um but but when you're on the road it, it you focus more on the task so no I do think there's an element to that um I, I mean I don't I don't know how much it's going to help this team but hey like you said we got to find a we're trying to find a positive where we can so here we are we're halfway through our season and we're going to back up to the Mike Gundy press conference now and asked about the quarterback spot. All three quarterbacks are getting reps in practice. I mean, how in the world can you be this far into a season and still be giving three quarterbacks reps? Yeah, and you know what? what's crazy about that is we're saying the exact same thing last year. You mm-hmm. know, um, It just I, doesn't work, does it? No. It's, well, you know the old saying, if you have, more, if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. You know, um, you know, because it's being a good quarterback. Yes, it's about making the right reads. It's about making the right decisions. But more than anything else, that quarterback is your field general on the field. You know, he's he's it's a leadership position. Always has been. Always will be. Um, And guys have got to have confidence in the quarterback. Um, That that can do wonders. I've seen that do wonders for teams just having confidence in the guy that you got back there. Um, 
you know, one of the things that I, that I, I did want to talk about today is we're going to – I'm really curious to see how Mike Gundy plays this on Friday because – I, I have no doubt that Gundy is going to do what he thinks is best for Oklahoma State football. Now, no doubt. In, 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 in the short term, what's the best thing for Oklahoma State football? Let's go into BYU. Let's find a way to win. I don't care which quarterback it is. If we if there's a way we can win with Alan Bowman, do it. You know, if, there, if, if Zane Flores is a guy and he's healthy, do it. Um, but then at the same time, you also have to step back as, okay, what's the best for the long term? And is the long term working with a younger guy? Let's get him some, some reps, you know, the, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, 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 sometimes I think fans we beca- can become illusioned that we think, that, okay, if we if Flores does come out, everybody's going to be excited to at least to see what the kid can do. But I'm going to put a very high probability on the fact that he's probably not going to look like Tom Brady. And the reason why is the offensive line still got a block. We still don't have a running game. Our defense is still getting shredded. So, so do you put a young kid in that situation, or do you just? ride with the guy that you've been riding with and, and, and try to go with that. I don't I don't I don't know the answer to that, but those are the those are the decision points that Gundy's gonna have to make this week. Yeah. Are you bypassing Garrett Rangel at all and all? I mean I, I can tell you whether Flores plays or not, there is an injury there that he will have to deal with, whether he can either deal with it on the field or not on the field. Yeah, yeah, and and it, in in my personal opinion, I don't think this is the best place to put because you're going up against a top twenty five team on the road that right, BYU is playing with a lot of confidence right now. Your 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 quarterback Flores is is at least somewhat banged up because of the foot injury. We don't know the extent to it. From the outside looking in, it's probably not the best scenario to do that. Um, but I would expect I, I would I would expect that I think we will see Rangel on Friday. Um, in fact, we may see a large dose of him. I mean, we'll we'll see what ends up happening. But um, you know, I mean, the, the thing what I'd say for for Rangel is if he was to come out there Friday and just and start you know putting some points on the board, he could take the starting job. You know, I mean, it's this thing's up for grabs right now. Um, so I I would expect to see Rangel. I think I'd, I'd be very very shocked if we saw Flores. But you never know. Yeah. Yeah, you would not be shocked if we saw Bowman. No, I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked. We, I, I think it, right now, I think we're kind of in that, we're still in that searching mode. We're either, okay, would either Bowman or Rangel, just one of them, step up to the plate and, and let's show some. Think we'll see both? I, th- I think you'll probably see both. I, I mean, I really do. Now, my, my hope is we put we pick one or the other and they come in and they put up 50 points. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, and the, okay, there's our quarterback moving yeah. forward. But, but I don't think that that's very likely. So it's, it's probably likely we we're probably going to see both of them on Friday. That would be my guess. My hope is that you see both, but with distinct – Coach Rainwater hit on this – distinct reasons why they're both in. Not yeah. because they're in direct competition with each other, but because we have a package that suits Alan Bowman that we think he runs best. Then we have a separate type of package, maybe more of a, a read option type package for a Garrett Rangel that just simply gives the defense more – to look at right so maybe not necessarily hey Rangel versus Bowman but we have two different skill sets in our quarterbacks let's utilize both skill sets play them both and then have two different styles of offense when each one of them is in I think that could be effective too yeah I agree I mean if if nothing else if you utilize that strategy you're giving the defense different looks you know, yeah. they, they, they can't just key on one thing because they, they, they know exactly what's coming next kind of a deal. So, no, I, I'd agree with that. I think, you know, that the one thing that we could use is the element of surprise is always out there. Yeah. You know, let's try something we haven't tried before. Um, I'm hoping it's not an Allen Bowman quarterback draw up the middle. That's yeah. right. Twice in a row. I yeah. don't mind him running it every day. Hey, he scored against, I think, OU with it last year. Yeah. So the play has had success in the past. I don't mind running that play. Yeah. It was the second time in a row, the time it got me. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I had a I had a good friend of mine. He, he said, Well, you know, we're not having success running the ball with our Dope Walker award winner, so let's try Bowman, see if he has any success. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that I, didn't make a lot of sense. The offensive line is what it is. I mean, it's 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 not physically going to get better. There are guys up there that have had multiple surgeries that just are what they are. And it's been well chron- chronicled, well, well documented. I think there's some foot speed issues. I think there are certain physical limitations that aren't going away anytime soon. You would have to scheme around them with like a Garrett Rangel to, you know, hey, make the defense think you're going this way, go back the other, that kind of deal. So what are you expecting out of this offense Friday? 
my, I'm expecting us to use a few more bubble screens. And, and the reason why I'm expecting that is because, okay, whatever quarterback we throw in there, we can make it where it's fairly easy throws. We're not asking you to thread a needle between two linebackers up the middle kind of a deal um, that would allow our receivers to get in space, hopefully, if we can block on the edge. Now, the only reason, the only way that that play works is you've got to get good blocking by your wideouts. Um, you've got to have good, big, physical wideouts that are able to do that. Um, but I, frankly, I would expect it. Really, my expectation is you could see anything on Friday. Um, mm-hmm. I, I could see us coming out and doing the same old, same old, where we're trying to run between the tackles. Um, I could see us trying to do some flea flickers. I could see a hook and ladder. I mean, it's it, at the same time, it's not. It's not usually within Gundy's nature to try to run things that are very, uh, I say, risky. You know, mm-hmm. Gundy has always played things fairly conservative, you know, ball control, make sure we don't turn the ball over, those kind of things. Um, but uh, to be honest, I think it's this is one of those situations where if we don't take risks, we're not going to come out of there Friday with a win. In fact, we may, we may end up getting blown out if we're not willing to take a few risks and try some, uh, some new things. Mike Gundy, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of coach talk, and, and typically speaking, his press conferences are a waste of time because you get nothing out of them because he just says the same canned – Coaches' responses over and over, and we got probably 98% of that yesterday, and especially whenever they asked him about making changes in the middle of the season, which, hey, I, I, I commend Jenny Carlson for going there, very difficult issue to tackle, but we all knew what Mike Gundy was going to say. Hey, I don't remove coaches in midseason. I just don't see the point in it. Never have, and that's exactly what he said yesterday. So when you look at Casey Dunn, I think it's at least to what Mike Gundy, if you believe Mike Gundy, He's probably safe until the end of this year. So is there anything – is this an evaluation period for Casey Dunn, or do you think Mike Gundy, regardless of what happens the rest of the season, has already made up his mind on Dunn, but just isn't going to move on until the season's over? Of which, I'll say this before you get into that. Bill Young, Sean Gleason, Vance Bedford, Mike Gundy has shown that he will move on almost immediately as soon as the season's over. Yeah, I, I I think Gundy truly is one of those. He's going to let the whole season play out before he makes his decision. Because, okay, let, let's – I mean, I don't think this is going to happen. But let's say all of a sudden we, we win Friday night and all of a sudden that creates a spark and we rip off and we end up winning eight, nine games. Looks like we've got things figured out. The fans are probably going to feel a little bit differently about it. My Gundy's probably going to feel a little bit differently about it. But I – Judging what I think is going to happen, I don't think that Dunn is going to be our offensive coordinator next year. Yeah, that's just that. That's my. That's right, right now. This isn't working. And to be honest, if it, you're it, betting in Vegas, yeah, if I was betting in Vegas, I would bet that we're probably going to have a new offensive coordinator next year. Um, Nardo, I think, is a little bit is is a little bit different of a, of a case because okay, he's he's newer than Dunn. Um, Okay, does he? I mean, and, and again, Gundy, you know, knows more about this than, than any of us. But um, you know, has he had a, a chance to truly implement his his scheme? Is he? Are the players responding to him in practice? Are they? Are they? Uh, and Gundy even mentioned this yesterday. Are they progressing? Are we building our guys? Are, are they getting our player development? Is right it, now, they're getting worse. Ex- I exactly. think it's. I, I love Nardo, but there's just no other way to put it. Yeah, the defense yeah. is getting worse. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, and, and again, it, it probably could be the exact same thing. If we somehow were able to turn this thing around and by the end of the year the defense is playing really well, okay, that may change the story. But I think at least from where I'm sitting right now, I think there's a higher probability than not we're probably going to be looking for two new coordinators at the end of the year. That's Oh, really? You think he's going to move on from Nardo too? I think I think, I think think there's a very distinct possibility. and, and well, That's I, a lot of change. I know, and and that's not, and the only reason why I'd say that that wouldn't be the case is because Mike Gundy does not like changing coordinators, and 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 in the risky. old, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's very risky, but at the same time, I mean, we're we've got what is it like the third or fourth worst defense in all of college yeah, football? Yeah, right. it's not defensible. Yeah, it just it, it's hard to argue that. Well, I I think the question would be at the end of the year is why should I keep this guy? Right. What, what reasons had, do I have to keep him versus what reasons do we probably need to try somebody else? And right now, I hate to say this, but the try somebody else is probably <laughs> is probably winning. Where uh, it sits right now, yes. Yeah. But, but again, there's still a lot that can happen. I mean, if, if all of a sudden we turn this thing around and we start you know, winning eight, nine games, okay, it, everybody starts to feel a little bit differently about that, and it has a different vibe going into next year. Um, you know, some of that, I, I feel like uh, some of the firings we see around college football – is not because the guy doesn't understand X's nose. So we talk many times. These guys don't get these jobs without understanding X's nose. But the problem is there's just a bad vibe going into next year if 
you, you've you still got the guy around that was just absolutely terrible the, the year before. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm-hmm. you need a fresh, a, 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 a fresh breath of air, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I know Gundy's, Gundy's very analytical. He doesn't really get into the emotional side of things as much, which, I mean, at, at the end of the day, that's probably really what you want out of a head coach. But – at the same time, it's going to be hard if because at the same time, if we continue to have this poorly ranked of a defense, it's going to affect recruiting. It's going to affect ticket sales. I mean, those are just the realities, um, and those are just things that he's going to have to weigh. But but like but, but like you said at the start of this, Gundy's not going to do anything until the end of the year. I, I just I really don't I don't see that that's going to that's going to happen outside of something that was illegal, <laughs> you know, something of that magnitude. I don't think we're going to see any changes until the end of the year. I think if somebody walked into me and said, "Hey, you're making seven thousand, seven hundred thousand dollars a year. You have six games to prove yourself." I'd take that bet, right? Th- yeah. This isn't like a criticism or anything. This is more just kind of a an open evaluation from a very level. I mean, you you're an official, right? You're a high level official. You literally get paid to be level headed, right? Yeah. And you're always the most level headed guy out of everybody on this channel. And you're hearing those words come out of your mouth. That's that's not meant to throw shade. That's not meant to, almost. It's almost meant to be like, hey guys. I mean, I like you, Coach Nardo. This is a challenge to you, man. Please get this figured out because yeah. I would prefer that you be here next year. But yeah. I'm afraid you won't be if you don't get it fixed. Yeah, no, it, you're exactly right. I mean, the, the the hope for all of us is okay. Yeah, okay. We've lost three games. Yeah, blah blah blah. We're not going to win a Big Twelve title. Big whoop the best thing for the program right now is let's go get a win on Friday and let's get this thing going so we can get some momentum going into next year. And, and part of that is we need our coordinators to, to figure these things out and, and hopefully in a hurry. Um, you know, I, I, at the same time, I think what I would at least, what I'm hoping to see on Friday, we, we're probably, I'll just go ahead and say right now, I would not pick us to win on Friday, but I want us to, let's find something, whether it's, it's okay. Hang your hat on. Yes, yeah, something to hang your hat on. Either we get Rangel, okay, he's able to, to be mobile in the in the in the pocket. Uh, we complete some long passes. Defense comes up with a few stops here and there. That okay, you know, maybe we we, we hold them to you know a, a single digits in the first half. Whatever it is, we need something that we can build off of. We can say, hey, we found something that's working because right now nothing mm-hmm. nothing's really yeah. working. So very level-headed look at it there. But let me ask you this, okay? If I were to tell you as a diehard Oklahoma State fan, which obviously it doesn't get more diehard than I am, I, I, can just, I can just tell you that. If I were to say worst case scenario is that we patch it just enough to keep Casey done, hmm. that's worst case scenario. For me as a diehard yeah. Oklahoma State fan, how would you respond to me? Because now we're going to have Coach Dunn next year. We're going to have the same set of problems. We're going to have the same set of mediocrity just because he was able to rally enough and be average enough to keep his job, and I say that's worst case scenario. What do you say to somebody like me who's a diehard? I'm not saying I necessarily feel that way, but for others that are diehard like me, there's a lot of them that do. Here's what I would say with that is, he it is, and, and I think the question is, okay, where where would that standard be one to okay where he does just enough to keep his job? Um, because what I would look at is if I was if I was in Gundy's shoes, I'm not just looking at this year. What happened last year? Yes. You know what happened um, the year before. I, I still and I'm not. I don't want to bring up bad memories because I'm as OSU fan as it gets. But I was there when we had four tries inside the five to win a Big Twelve championship. Yes. And we get a yard. Yes. Uh, I still remember that. You know that kind of deal. So from a fan standpoint, I don't. I honestly don't think that there is a a case where you would say that Dunn has done enough to keep his job for next year. I think what Gundy, the way Gundy's going to approach this, and I do believe this is the right way to look at it. Okay, if I'm going to let Dunn go. What's what am I bringing in to replace it? Yep. Because if it's he, like quitting a job, you better already have another one. Yeah. Ready to go if you're going to right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, exactly. Exactly. So I think that to me, that's what it comes down to is okay. If if we have to let Dunn go, who's who are we bringing in, and what's who's going to uh, replace him, and what's he going to do different and or hopefully better um, than what Dunn is doing? Um, you know, and and the thing I'd say with Dunn that I think is 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 kind of a sad deal, and we may have talked about this before. Is Dunn was a phenomenal wide receiver coach. I mean, you look. I mean, still is. I mean, yeah. I mean, the guy can coach receivers. But as a, but I've I've learned this in the business world. I've seen it on officiating in the officiating world as well. People can have really really good skills at one job, but that doesn't necessarily translate into the other one. You right. know, you can be a great wide receiver coach, but you're not real good at play calling. Yeah. You can be a great. Um, um, assistant coach, a great assistant coach, but being the head man's just not quite in your 
um, in, in your you know your your, your strength your skill set. So it, it, and to me, I, I kind of think that's kind of what we've got a little bit going on here because I mean from a from a wide receiver standpoint. I don't want Dunn to go anywhere. He's got a, a proven track record that he knows how to coach and recruiting. Wide. Yeah, and recruiting and all those things. Pipelines. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, Dunn, I mean, I think that's that's part of the thing. Is, you know, I feel like you know people will throw Dunn under the bus as if he has no skills at all. He does. He's got very very good skills in these specific areas, but he just hasn't, at least to this point, hasn't proven himself as a no coordinator. That's it. I think that's a very fair statement to make about him. I don't think anybody could push back against that. At all. I, I would totally agree. And there is a home run scenario out there. I mean, I, I think Oklahoma State fans are hungry enough. We have – I don't think it's spoiled. I hear this a lot from, from insiders, and I do disagree with this. I appreciate the perspectives they're coming from. I don't think it's spoiled at all for us fans to be extremely pissed about this season yep. and to be reacting the way that we are. I think it is spoiled. Rainwater hit this, and he's exactly right. It is spoiled that if we expect Mike Gunny to come out and tell us – exactly how he's feeling about about Casey Dunn or exactly his true feelings about Nardo or exactly what he's thinking in terms of fire we're that's entitled there we don't we're not entitled to know exactly how Mike Gundy is thinking in terms of the hiring or firing of anybody on his staff or even changes in X and O's but we are entitled hey first of all people within the program should be extremely excited about the fact that we expect to compete for championships i mean that's that's the anger that's coming out of fans is that we want to be a fan base that roots for championships not independence bowls i don't know why anybody would be frustrated with that yeah no i I don't think so and and i think the other thing that that there's another element that has gone into the frustration with fans this year is to be honest and i think we're all everybody's struggling to explain why this is happening yes I mean, it's just, it's, it's everything with this year was set up. You know, we saw the progress last year. You know, we got a great running back. It was the same offensive line that won him a Doak Walker award yeah. last year. Why, why, why can we not run the ball? You know, I mean, that, that kind of deal. Um, I, I think that's the other part of the emotion that, that's coming out of fans is just, frankly, we can't explain it. I mean, I don't, you know, we, we try to on here, but this, to be honest with you, this is the most unexplainable yeah. football season I think OSU's had. Well, the only my- way you can explain it is Casey Dunn. That's literally the only explanation we can come up with as fans, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's that, that. That's the only thing that, that that we can we can possibly grasp onto. Um, you know, like going back to Mike Gundy's first season. I remember in two thousand. You know, he, he took over in two thousand five. We knew we weren't going to be good that year because one, it's a transition year. Um, you know, we didn't, we hadn't in, invested. You know, as we did when, once Boone Pickens came along, that kind of deal. We, we were kind of ready for that. This one has completely hit everybody blindsided, and I, and I think that's really playing into into the emotional side of it. I tell you another thing. I think two years ago, where it just felt like the team quit on him in 2022, I think that's also playing on Oklahoma State fans' emotions because you're like, so every other year we're gonna have to deal with with just basically having a dumpster fire for a program. That's yeah. what it's been the last two out of three years. I think that year also, and then also you had the Chuba Hubbard deal with yeah. with with all of that, the shirt, the OAN shirt that that he wore, which we've covered that. He has a right to wear that, but he also has to understand he is the CEO of a bunch of people that that's going to make mad. So there's consequences to every right that you have, right? So it just seems like every other year for the last six years, there's been some kind of dumpster fire that we've been trying to put out. Yeah, which 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 is kind of odd because, like we said before, one of the hallmarks of a Mike Gundy coach team is consistency, you know? Mm -hmm. But it seems like for the last, I'd probably say – Three to five years, we've been incredibly inconsistent. We have yeah. we have moments of great highs, you know, Fiesta Bowl win, um, you know, making it back to the Big Twelve, you know, beating OU to it in the last three years, those kind of things. But then we have lows that are just flat unexplainable, like you know, South Alabama um, this year. I mean, it, it's just that we we've been so inconsistent. Um, and, and and again, I don't I don't have enough inside knowledge to know inside the program what could be causing that. Um, you know, I mean, football, it can be a strange game sometimes, but this year it doesn't, it's not like we're just, okay, we've had a few turnovers that have caused the game to sway one way or the other. You know, I think we would all feel totally different if we had lost three games all by one score. Yeah, you I know? made a bad call on fourth and three, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, mean, I didn't like the sprint pass against OU on the two-point conversion with Corndog. It's a good play. It's going to be open, but I just, in that scenario, you know, Corndog's going to be nervous. I don't like him moving. It's right. more difficult, that kind of deal. It's not yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, it has a very very different feel to it this year, um, 
you know, so and, and that's why, I, like we said earlier, my expectation is where I'm sitting today, I think we are going to see some pretty, pretty heady changes at the end of the season. Yeah. And and, you know, I mean, I don't know how big those changes are. I warn Oklahoma State fans. We saw it with the gap scheme last year. But still, a lot of the split zone stuff OSU was running is a lot of the zone away gap scheme, pull scheme. It was with the H-backs and all that. So they were doing at least some of that. But I also warned that in four practices in the bye week, uh, it's it's still more diff. I think Oklahoma State fans think you can just go nuclear and blow the whole damn thing up and put a whole new team out there, run an entirely new scheme. You're still very limited at the amount of changes that you can see. So I warn Oklahoma State fans, if it doesn't look like – Everything has been changed on Friday. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised by that. Yeah, no, I no, I, I completely agree. I mean, it's you can't completely completely change what you do. Now, obviously, there's there's changes that need to be happen, you know. But the other thing, and and, I, and I'm guessing this is the thing that they've been focusing on is whatever schemes we're running, you know, guys. If you execute better, <laughs> this scheme, whatever scheme it is that we're running, is going to is going to get you better results. Yes, uh, you know, I mean, so sometimes sometimes it's not. It, it isn't just that the scheme is wrong; is that we just we're not executing, um, and 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 maybe and and, and my hope there's is- some of that. I, I there's some of that. I think some yeah. of the reasons why we're not executing is because the scheme is piss poor too. True. No. 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 I I think both of those things have are 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 to blame when you, when you see the results that we've had. Um, my hope is again that we either okay we see some 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 changes, um, and but then we also see just better execution. Um, yeah. You know. I mean, you know, football, the thing to me that gets me is, and I see this all the time, particularly in high school, is sometimes you don't, when it comes to blocking, you don't have to decleat a guy every time. Oh, no, right. Arkansas didn't. They were fanning that nine tech and running right up underneath them, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So sometimes all I need you to do is put a hat on a guy to spring our running back. I mean, because here's the deal. If you give Ollie a seam, he's he, Ollie's still a really good running back. You know, we don't have to create a hole the size of a Mack truck for Ollie Gordon to bit to get some yards, but we've got to give him we got to give him just enough time to, to slip him through. So, hopefully, we'll see some changes. There is also I would say this for Oklahoma State fans. I hear this quite a bit, and that is bring back Zach Robinson. He is on pace, I think, someday to be a NFL head coach. So I think that's pie in the sky. Just get that out of your brain. He's not coming to Oklahoma State to be the offensive coordinator. I certainly hope that I'm proven wrong there if there is a move being made. But I think there is a home run higher out there, and I think you could go get a Dana Holgerson. You could invest in Red Bull and say to hell with it. I don't know that Mike Gundy in his older age would want to deal with somebody that's as controversial as Dana Holgerson in terms of not giving a crap what Mike Gundy thinks, right, and just kind of doing what he thinks is right instead as the offensive coordinator. But I think there are some scenarios out there or you could go get uh, a Dana Holgerson or something like that and make a home run higher. Here, here would be the only thing I would say that might, and, and, and I don't want to give anybody false hope on this, because as, as it stands, I agree with you on the Zach Robinson thing. But here's one thing that might give you some hope with the Zach Robinson thing. So Mike Gundy, how old is Gundy now? He's late 50s, early 60s? Yeah, late, late yeah. 50s. So he's already said he doesn't want to coach until he's you know 80. Okay, if you brought Zach Robinson in as offensive coordinator, eventually Gundy's probably going to want to look in towards some kind of transition plan to who becomes the next head coach at OSU. I mean, I know that's that's probably that right now that's not on everybody's radar because we're worried about the the immediate. But what if I mean, what if okay if if you tell Robinson okay come in and be the offensive coordinator for a couple of years, you think then, Mike Gundy's going to accept that 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 we're bringing Zach Zach Robinson to be his replacement someday? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't see that at all, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't see Gundy's ego being able to deal with that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe, but 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 at the same time, I could see Gundy going if it was his idea, and he said, you know, hey, I need to. I'm getting older. I only want to do this for X number of years. You know, further than this, maybe. Now, like I said, that is probably pie in the sky. I would not go to Vegas and bet money to Zach Robinson. <laughs> yeah coordinator that's you're saying that's the only scenario is if mike gundy chooses to go out and get zach robinson and make him his heir apparent that's the only way that zach robinson comes back is that what you're saying possibly yeah i I mean i mean and 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 that and and again i mean we don't know the minds of these guys i mean i don't know i mean you know zach has had a a lot of success at the nfl level Mm -hmm. a lot want to be at the at the nfl level but at the same time you know, I know Zach. Loves Would you want to deal with the NIL and the transfer portal and these spoiled brat kids in, in college that have more say so about it than you do? Or would no. you want to be in the NFL and deal with mature adults? I'd rather be in the NFL deal with. Mature. I would, but but 
but you never know. But at the same time, you know, you look at it like uh, you look at Nick Saban. You know, Nick Saban was is is the greatest college football coach of all time. How long did he last in the NIL transfer portal of the world? Not long. <laughs> that's right. The, See, that, that's the deal. Yeah. I mean, his, his philosophy. So his fly. He has great theories and all that. He's great. But if I have four players at one position that are better than any player that you have at your position. Yeah. I can piss off three of them and still be better than you, and that fourth one's fighting like hell, right? So yeah. he can say and do as he pleases because if somebody wants to to get all pissed and leaves, then he, he still has three All-Americans sitting behind yeah. it. If you're in Oklahoma State and you have that and you piss off Colin Oliver, uh, I'm just using the names of the firepower guys. You piss off Ollie Gordon, no offense to Sese Valahi, but he's not an All-American like right. LSU might have. To, so you got to be way more careful – in an Oklahoma State setting than a Nick Saban is. And in, and then before the transfer portal, before the NIL, when kids really couldn't transfer, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot that kids could do anyway. So I yep. don't think – I think it's pretty intentional that, that he's not coaching right now in that world. Yeah. Yeah, no, and it, and it could be. I mean, because like you said, Co- you see, and that's the other reason what I look at, the Gundy may start looking at, um, you know, at, at, at some type of transition plan is – I'll be honest with you. I think the NIL transfer portal stuff is wearing on Mike Gundy. No doubt. Uh, I mean, well, I, it's wearing on his formula yeah. of going and getting three-star players, putting them in in the oven, letting them bake for two or three years, yep. and when you come out, they come out as a four-star player. Yep. That formula doesn't work because they're going to Tulsa. They're going to yep. because they're getting more. I mean, if you're the back at the third-string right guard at Oklahoma State. What kind of NIL money are you getting, right? I mean, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, like, yeah, and I, that's and I, what's bothering him. Yeah, and and I think we talked about that. That yeah, that that player development model in, in the transfer portal, it just uh, um, and and again, none of us like this. I don't think any fan is out there that likes that. But the player development model that that Mike Gunny has been so successful at, it, it's just it, it's not going to work anymore. We're going to have to we're not gonna, not in the entirety that it did before. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not saying it's not saying that, that you the flat out can't find a two star kid and turn him into a four star and he stays and you know good things happen. But the problem is, can you how many how many players can you do that with? Because we've literally made a living off of being able to do that. And I just I, I question it with with the, with the portal nil and everything else. Basically, what you've got to do is you've got to go get the best player that you've got can today play the most talented kid. Regardless of, of, of experience, you got to play the guy that's got the talent, and you got to go win right now. I mean, I mean that's that's all yeah. you. Can do. So I think one thing I would say, if I had five minutes to talk to Mike Gundy, is that I don't disagree with you on the experience thing. I, I cover the Dodgers a lot, and I can tell you they 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 believe totally in experience. Just look at the roster yeah. they put on the field. I mean, they if you haven't done it before, it's very difficult to get into their lineup. So the experience thing to professionals is absolutely huge. But I, I think the one, the first thing I would say to Mike Gundy is, I'm not disagreeing with you that experience is better, but what I'm trying to tell you is, in this day and, and age and environment of college football, play the most talented kid yep. and figure out how to coach that kid into getting the best production from the most talented player and not the most experienced player. Yep, yep. That, yep. that would be the first thing I think I would say. Am I off there? No, I, I would totally agree with that. Like I said, you know, it, that, that's a, a question I've actually asked coaches over the years. Okay, what the, the best case scenario for every coach is you want a kid that's got talent and he's got experience, right? That's, yes. the, that's the best. But if you had to pick one or the other, which one do you want? Be surprised. The majority 50, of coaches 50. told me they want talent. They want the guy that can Oh, really? Get, Good, yeah. Yeah, they, they tell me they want talent because, they, you know, talent, experience. They say that, but when it comes to fourth down and three, we'll see yeah. if the talent that's out there or the guy they trust. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that. That could be one of those things. They they say one thing, but they yeah. they, they, they lean towards. Um, but yeah, no, that's just that's just the reality we live in. It's basically you got to go get a win right now. Which going back to this is going to take us almost full circle. Going back to Friday, I think Gundy is going to make whatever decision he thinks is going to help us win right now. Now we'll see. Let the chips fall where they may. But I think that's what we're going to see Friday is whatever he thinks is is gives us the best chance to win Friday night in Provo. That's what he's gonna. That's what he's gonna do. Okay, we're gonna end with this, Scott. This has been a fascinating conversation. I always enjoy so much talking to you because you know you're just such a level headed person, but yet you're very open and honest with your feelings about Oklahoma State and and where they're at, and you know so much about it. So I've got a lot of pushback for making the, the comment that I trust Mike Gundy to make the changes and that I think it's totally up to him. He's earned the right 
to choose what changes need to be made. He does not have the right to say there are no changes that need to be made. But right. within the but within that element, he has earned the right to make the changes, whatever he thinks they need to be. I, I have stated firmly that I feel like that, that I feel that way and that I trust him totally to figure out what those changes are. Now I'm a little bit less confident that he'll do it in the time frame that I want him to do it. I, I don't think there's a sense of urgency sometimes that I think he needs. And I've gotten a lot of blowback, direct message. I mean, I've gotten probably 50 messages this week about, I can't believe you trust Mike Gundy, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, whatever. Fine. So I'm going to ask Scott McKinley, one of the most level-headed people I know, do you trust Mike Gundy to make the changes that this team needs, this program needs, and do you trust them to do it with the sense of urgency that fans will be happy with? I think he is going to trust him to make the decisions that are going to need to be made. But to the second part, I don't think it will come in the time frame that the fans would, would, would like. Um, you is know, that like, good or bad? To be honest with you, in the, in the overall, I actually think that's a good thing. Because okay. th- fans, we, we have a, a, a natural – we react too much to certain things, um, you know. And again, there's always things that go on inside a program that you don't know about. We're not in those meetings. We don't know what's going on there. Um, you know, I, I think the only concern that I have is exactly what we talked about just before. Is Gundy has always made very, very good decisions. I mean, look at the number of coordinators that he has hired that have mm-hmm. gone, to, you know, wonderful things. Not only for us, other teams, everything. Gundy's got a pretty good eye for for talented coaches, that's for sure. And he's always gotten to the right quarterback, although initially he's made the wrong decision about him, right? Yeah. yeah which okay, that yeah, that's and I and I do think there is some fair criticism to be made there because it, yes, it's, it's not a one time thing. Um, I, I think the only concern that I have. Is, is not that Gundy will make decisive action to do what he thinks is best. The concern that I have is, are we going to make the right decision for the new landscape yes. of college football? I think that's the only concern. Because I think that brings in the speed. I think it yeah. matters how fast you make those changes. and You yeah. can't be as deliberate nowadays with the transfer portal, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so I, I think to, to answer the, the original question, yes, I trust Mike Gunning to make the right deci- to, to make a good decision for what he thinks is best. Um, I don't think it's going to be as quick as we would like. I do expect changes at the end of the year, but my hope is is that we're going to make decisions that are going to allow us to to compete in the new world of college football because we can't do the same thing that we did ten years ago uh, because the, the the world has just changed. So, fascinating conversation, man. We could talk about this all day, Scott McKinley. Great job. Thanks, man.